Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Uh, I am now displaying a bit of the DLC playthrough that I, I, I got recently, because uh, I got into the hype of Pokemon during the year that I was getting my first paycheck, and I was really excited that they announced a new generation. Uh, I, I grew up with this game, so you know I, I just went on board and tried some new stuff this year because I had a bit more free time than necessary. So uh, yeah, this is me starting out, and I hope you uh, uh, enjoy this playthrough. It's a bit slow. I think the, the whole DLC thing lasted for like about uh, six hours of gameplay for me to like just get through and get the extra uh, uh, collectible critters that I now carry with me through my phone and like to show off to the people who are into the same things. <laughs> Hope that's not a big deal. I, uh, when I established this uh, playthrough, I didn't know what much expectation, but I had done a lot of like uh, a lot of like collecting. So like after beating the game, I, and I started slowly getting to shiny hunting, and I've done a lot of collecting. Like I think I collected all the shiny variants that took a, uh, most of them that I really really wanted in terms of designs, and some of them weren't available in Scarlet Violet, so I hunted them through. Uh, uh, egg hatching was a foreign ditto and managed to find uh, quite a few of them that I was looking for so in terms of like template in regards I was thought that while I was doing this kind of like playing this game there was a lot of things that I wanted to share I had a lot of fun drawing stuff particularly these crit uh, Pokemon critters and I thought I'd pick make a source story lore shorts of like a, uh, panels to share you know so like a small comic strip of some of the things. Oh, look at that luminet. Just I got the shiny berry of it. <laughs> I actually like uh, its style. It has this move just like a solar beam, but it's for physical damage. Since as I mentioned before, I got into competitive battling and had fun playing against other people, you know, who crafted their own teams and did what they wanted. There's a lot that took me by surprise when I was learning about competitive battling. Like, from real world formats, there was people who kind of like showed it in terms of bringing a non meta. Pokemon and won the tournament, and like Japan went crazy about it. So it's like I actually was thinking about doing some like logs of where I bring in my favorite mods that may change over time, and try to win in like PvP battles. Uh, yeah, I mean this is one thing, one of the many things I've had to share for gaming videos. As you can see, I got my shiny variants for uh, Hirsu and Broke Pokemon, and some nice ones. All orientated to what's to come. <laughs> if you saw my new video, you know what I mean. That I try to make out ice team, a team that would take advantage of snow. <laughs> snow is different this uh, uh, this generation. It's no longer acts as hail. It's supposed to just give stat boost increases now, which I don't know if I prefer over hail. I actually think I prefer hail, but whatever. You know that's the game. That's the rule of the games. <laughs> oh yeah, I crafted that, didn't I? The...
<laughs> the name of your dots, sorry. So I'm a bit new to like, uh, trying to like, uh, do commentary on playthroughs of knowing what is it that's, uh, interesting to like, keep it on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if the, I, when I used to watch video of playthroughs, it was because I couldn't afford a game. So when I, uh, Knew I couldn't get it, but I was very excited for the game sequel because uh, my family's kind of frugal in the direction they wanted me to go to. Uh, I would watch it, very easily watch it, and sometimes I'd talk to my brothers about it because we'd be excited about the same series, about some stuff that they said. Not, it's not so much as much as before, but I guess I kind of kept kept that in me, you know, series and games uh, that still kind of. I look forward to seeing it when I try out myself. I don't know if watching it ruins the whole experience of if you were to play it yourself, but like it was all about affordability for me for those kind of situations. So here and now I'm doing the same thing. You know, I'm, I'm broadcasting a playthrough. If you guys are interested to see, it's not offering anything new, but like I figured I'd add on to my channel because like maybe I did it some different ways that I can find myself being entertaining in this direction. Terrapagos. I like what they did with the Terrapagos theme. It's matching the timeline with the game series and the new serialization of where the anime is going. I do not watch it, by the way. I watched it when I was younger, the first one, and it was still new. In fact, when people were popular, Pokemon was popular back in like second grade, third grade for me. Uh, I just played like on a bar of Game Boy that a friend lent me, and I actually did not know what Pokemon was, but I joined in the hype, and I didn't start getting my first game that my, I got for my birthday until like fourth grade when Pokemon was already out, right? And all these things, I, I recognized small bits because of the cards, but like sometimes I basically inferred everything that I knew about Pokemon from friends, and I knew this was a big hype back in primary school. When I was starting, it's the first generation, man. I did something really funny when I first started the Pokemon game. 
So like, I didn't know how to read prop. I didn't know what the reading text was supposed to be, so I just pressed A. And like, that's all I did. I got stuck in like, before Viridian City, a very forest, because a guy that like, got a hangover in the game, prevents you from passing through. And like, I couldn't get it out, so all I did was walk on the grass and like, just press A all the time. And I was doing this on a borrowed game from one of my better off uh, 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 friends who played, uh, who's, who's playing it. So I got Bubble Sword all the way to Ivysaur, just for tackle, just for tackle and hard grinding level 2 pages and level 1 like Ratatas. And it was hilarious. Because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know like he was learning all these other moves, but I didn't get it. So I just pressed A. I just had the satisfaction of like beating up weak Pokemon <laughs> with tackle. <laughs> Later on I started learning how to play the game better, but I got stuck in the game several times. And like I recall like bringing the Game Boy in like summer camps and stuff like that. Youth youth club things. And like <laughs> I tried to ask tips and advice and it, it like it's really funny like some things people believed in to make things better in the game. Like the whole rumor was mute under the truck thing. I believe that shit. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not gonna be talking all the time, but like, it's easy to like, to like recall Kai's experience playing the game, how much the game has grown, changed, with some some goodness and some drawbacks. I mean, I had a lot of fun times playing it, and. Yeah, and now I just kind of like collect it. I like collecting stuff, so this is one thing. Is it weird? Well, Pokemon cards were like worth, are worth like, uh, when Pokemon cards were a fad, you know, they amounted to a lot of money being value. So people were opening streams about just trying to find rare cards to see if they made more money from their booster pack, so much so. Kind of like, uh, what is it Gambling. <laughs> yeah, pretty much like gambling. <laughs> Because uh, the Pokemon card game is just okay, in my opinion. It's kind of like sports cards, right? But like, I don't have a TV to like really watch flexibility of these cha uh, channels. I did follow up a bit when I was at my cousin place, but I, I don't know the hype for entertainment sold in these directions. Some games I re really enjoyed watching on long term when they were doing play throughs were like Bioshock. I got into following one streamer for a very long time and uh, <laughs> watching gaming goes back for me like to the back when I was a kid in summer and like one of our relatives would babysit us and I just enjoy used to watching my older cousins play before the introduction to Twitch, right? So like Legend of Zelda, and I had some really funny, funky like gaming memories from like being too afraid to go to a part of the section for Legend of Zelda because there were zombies there, and I hated dealing with the zombies. They freaked me out. Like I was like a complete chicken as a kid when I was watching <laughs> people play video games. I was pretty introverted, so video games were one of the easiest ways for me to like connect to people as well a bit. And me and my brother used to talk a lot about them, so we both grew up like enjoying playing. Yanma. Yeah, that was a funny one. I remember like in Gen 2 when my brother finally got his own Game Boy because again my mom bought it and it was a link cable. 
And that was really funny because, like, uh, I would pretend to be another rival, roleplay into another rival, just like the first generation, or the second generation. <laughs> and my brother did the tell tactic of just training and funneling one Pokemon, while me, I was trying to, like, train all of them evenly. <laughs> it was really fun. But, like, let me get to the point, right? So, for the... For Yanma, it was a cool Pokemon because, like, you had to, like, uh... You had to like uh, get a phone number of a trainer, and then later on, as you played on the game, they would call you and they would tell you about hordes coming in too, for Gen 2. For anyone like not familiar with Pokemon series and its timeline from its growth, Gen 1, Gen 2 were the generation I got into the most. Was my was my was my little bro, and then I didn't watch, I didn't look into Pokemon for a very very long time. And then I came back to it uh, when I was trying to do stuff like not affordably buying the games, but like understanding stuff on the internet. So like, yeah, basically making the game more accessible, so I didn't need to pay for the original uh, product, which isn't doesn't have strict laws in America or in the West. But like, this is huge copyright infringement in like Japan. If they caught you doing this, they can charge. They can charge you. But like it makes sense, right? Because it's a big company, and a good foundation of their employees and workers are uh, going to lose out in that, and lose out in business from uh, you being able to like rip the copy illegally. <laughs> but like you, you do what you gotta do. If you if you didn't have much money, or if your parents, family were like kind of frugal, at, at the same time, Pokemon's a big company. I, I think as long as you don't try to like uh, brand. It, Toxic intoxicate their brand in a larger scale. I don't, they'll probably let go of like small things. But like, I remember hearing a story of like uh, some guy hacking uh, PvP battles to get the Pokemon's hidden stats that they're not supposed to. And he did this to jailbreak to make spare cash for people playing, uh, enjoying the franchise, just playing normally or for fun, right? In Japan, by the way. And when the company found this, they sued him and put him to jail for copyright for like messing with their product. It's a big difference, right? Because this is this is probably one of Japan's most uh, uh, successful brands worldwide, and still holds like a lot of life from 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 this point on. In so many years has gone by. So yeah, Pokemon is fun for me. Uh, I'm, I'm sure in Japan it makes a lot of money. So you know. I used to love role playing as a kid because I couldn't get a real animal. So Pokemon, I would simulate that shit. <laughs> and like, when we, and it, it's so weird, right? In the kindergarten when you're a kid, but like I pretend to be a Pokemon for my friends because <laughs> they were trying, they were telling me to do like attack moves and all that. And like I got, you gotta remember I'm a kid, okay? So I do weird shit. <laughs> but like, that's how much of like that's how much of the hype lived up for me. Right? I needed- to, I was pretending to be a pet, right? <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, I mean, like, when you're a kid, you don't have that much money. You you let your imagination play through, and, like, if you consume a lot of, like, uh, you know, popular TV shows and all that, you know, those things come out quite well. So I, I used to play a lot role-playing with my imagination. And I just like the idea of being a person's the main antagonist is rival. Kinda like Gary. Gary to Ash. Gary always was one step ahead of Ash, it was so funny. <laughs> in the anime, I don't see the show depicts it much. But in the game, you know, he, he's a dick for, for a very long time. And it, I like his appearance. There was always a sense of drama whenever my, I saw the character come back out. <laughs> 
Good times. I did not understand a lot of rare Pokemon back when I was playing it. And I was the biggest chicken of like, after like beating the game one way, of understanding why being frugal in the game is kind of stupid. Like, whenever you, you know, like, like the way I played the game was just like, I would never use potions. I was like, I oh, know I gotta co collect and save it and keep it in my stock for all time. <laughs> it was a really stupid way of playing. And like because of that, my little brother beat the elite four before me. But then he also used legendary, so I feel like that's not really, doesn't really count. <laughs> we hyped it really hard when the remix came because they also added the feature of like Poker Walkers, so you walk around and your Pokemon would be with you. So it was such a cute thing, and I loved it. It's when I started socializing, going to the arcades as well. Like arcades is a great way for like introverts to kind of like slowly extrovert themselves outside. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I made some friends externally. Some, I I don't know. Some of them are too busy for me and all that. But like, yeah. But like I was uh, talking to some Filipino pe uh, uh, people and they hyped it as well because they loved the game when they were kids. And we did Pokemon battles. It was really funny. I, I remember just doing it based on like what my experience of playing it through without doing too much research on competitive battling Pokemon, right? And <laughs> unfortunately, I, I think they also like, used some hacked Pokemon. But like we did a battle... And they were trying to tell me stuff, but like, it's not true. Now I know it's not true. <laughs> but I still beat them because like I chose some really strong base base Pokemon. I had like Electrovire, Waylord, and Drapion, right? This was like 4th gen, 4th gen out. 5th gen was coming out at that time. But like, I got into the Soul Silver and Heart Gold remakes. Uh, that was my first time doing PvP. And like, I based the choices on that. Only on the fact of which Pokemon I thought were strong in the game when I did the normal playthrough, not referring to the internet. And I, I did win it, <laughs> so it was pretty funny. I chose really Pokemon that I had a hard time beating, so it was bulky. <laughs> I mean, I got in, it was also, if you weren't with, along with gamer nerdy friends, it was kind of hard to admit that you still like enjoy the series, and I and I still carry it with me. You know, <laughs> game has changed a lot, and uh, they're at the one K mark now for different Pokemon species, from 150 to one K. Amazing. <laughs> oh shit, my galate died. Down, my Corvish. Shiny Pokemon used to be such a huge, huge deal as well. I got really excited on the bag dragon of like accessibility to shinies before I got into finish beating the game first. I got a whole bunch now, but like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still get very excited for that shit. And I, I did a lot of different shiny met hunting methods, which I bragged to my little brother. Uh, this generation. So this generation is probably my peak success in this game series of like get uh, uh, Getting the most out of it. I always wanted to get into PvP. I just recently started this year and Playing against other people and yeah, it's been fun. It's been more fun than expected. I wouldn't discredit it I think it's more big in Japan though, obviously. So yeah Yeah, I, I, yeah there's, there's like six hours. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to like openly share to talk about my feelings of this game and like how much I have attachment to this.
<laughs> and if you watch my videos, my cousin was a, when he was young, he used to be a huge Pokemon fanatic. He obsessed with it. It's so it's so cheap for him back then. <laughs> He's older now. He does other stuff, but like yeah, I I, I get this going for me from when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> Poco Rocco was really good because like at the time I was getting into the step game for DDR or pump it up max and like it was music and playing in the arcades and like extra steps you know I, I think it counted like every time I would like do those steps because like we play we'd be speedsters right and like <laughs> that would count marks so after a gaming session you go to game and then it would also like give hype it call, uh, Increase the pedometer uh, count for your Poke Walker. <laughs> it's too train. Uh, that's funny. The main limitation from like getting the games when they're released at its peak is popularity for me was financial, obviously. The battles in PvP in PvE aren't that much to brag about. It's more about collecting your favorite mons and making them look cool. You can win with literally anything, at least at this stage now, right? But at the start, I didn't know that. I would struggle with like stuff like Whitney. I, I remember Whitney kicking my ass for a very long time in Generation Two. And then, who else would I get stuck against? Elite Four. <laughs> uh, this is also before you use the internet and YouTube to like look up answers. Back when I was playing, right? I didn't know you could look up stuff. So sometimes I would generally get stuck in the game and like uh, talk to other people who play the game, ask them, them how they did this and what so. Uh, good times, good times. I actually just got this one because of the ice beam. <laughs> the color plating for this shiny isn't my favorite. Oh, this was the first time I see this. I was like, what? A Japanese style poltergeist. Sick! I love it! <laughs> I, I I like this new variant. I I didn't look at anything, so I'm just seeing it as it as it is right now. And yeah, I love the idea. Matcha tea. They have this like traditional thing in Japan where you have to like turn the cup three times before you drink tea. Uh, I, I used to take like Japanese lessons because like I was in that phase where I was like really nerding a bit, like in the sense that I went to learn how to speak it to watch the anime and understand better because it was a new experience for me and like uh, anime was funny and cool. It was cartoons in a different way than I'm used to seeing them. From like Saturday Night Cartoons to like uh, 
one of the more popular series that's popular over there. And this was when YouTube started. So you can still watch it before copyright infringements. Like, a lot of my other friends got into this Japanese uh, Japanese culture before I knew about it and I came in too late. But yeah, some of it was quite fun to watch. I, I could like empathize a lot with some of the main Shun characters. We used to, I used to watch it on the laptop, share it with my little bro and watch things together. Oh god. I had like a very like a weeby, weeby phase <laughs> when I was younger. The names in the Pokemon are very different as well. They call it something different. But they all rec I don't know if they'll recognize that, yeah? If you, you call Pokemon a certain way in English to someone in Japan who only speaks Japanese. <laughs> Unlikely, but yeah. Alright, that ends this first part. Hope you don't mind me like kind of reminiscing and uh, sharing these small snippets of the game and my enjoyments of like popular Japanese medium cultures. Hey everyone, thank you for putting the effort to watch uh, the effort I place on making something of an entertaining video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I said before, uh, it's not forced, but like I really would appreciate any uh, uh, contribution and support you give to this channel as it gives me more motivation and uh, more incentive to enjoy more uh, video creating and, and uh, content creation. Uh, if you find that the content uh, drifts away at any point, you can always subscribe. It's no big deal. Again, it doesn't do, it doesn't mean much. Uh, it doesn't take much from you, and but it means a whole bunch of me. And it feel it would feel great if you were just reward my efforts of trying to be uh, you know positive and contributionary. Thank you so much. Bye.